The technical education and, and training is since 1965 deeply involved or deeply embedded in the Festo, in the Festo group. And I'm very, very glad in the meantime that uh, Hans-Jörg Stotz, uh, the board member from Festo Didactic, joined us and he will give us a little bit more insight into education these days. Thank you. I mean, education is, I think, essential for technology to become innovation. So we're seeing right now, especially around the topic of Industry 4.0, significant demand globally on trainings for Industry 4.0. So base technologies, robotics, uh, additive manufacturing, all those themes, cybersecurity, become hot everywhere over the globe, but people are looking for how can we train our people to get there. Digitization as such is not a one-time event. So what we're seeing is fast changes in technology, but also in business models out there. And in that sense, I think learning becomes more and more essential because it's becoming the real le lifelong learning that people can use to adapt to technology and take it into innovation. So for us at Festo Didactic, it means we need to provide people with the foundation technologies. So we have, as Mr. Demers said, come from pneumatics, hydraulics, electrical engineering topics, but we're moving clearly into foundation technologies like artificial intelligence as well. But you also need to apply technology in bigger context, in applications, as you said. And applications for us are, for example, cyber-physical factories. Cyber-physical factories, we have an offering where we provide colleges, vocational schools, companies with a model factory where you can basically train and experiment with all those technologies without disrupting your production lines. So topics like commissioning, things like how do you integrate new technologies, all those aspects are basically being realized in that CP factory. Also the topic that was discussed earlier around, uh, around energy efficiency is one of the modules that we provide with an energy box that is very similar and actually founded on the technology of Festo uh, C2M that we do to basically connect the machine to an I through an IoT gateway to the cloud and measure kind of the consumption of uh, power, for example. So that's how we basically take kind of real technology from Festo into a learning situation. And to complete the circle, welcome Mrs. von Hefen. Hello. Great to have you here. And you often have the topic of energy efficiency also on your screen on your Bionic Learning Network. So what about this year? Yeah, that's right. Energy efficiency is a topic that we have very often in our projects. So this year we took inspiration from a small bird, a swallow or a swift. The Bionic Swift is a very lightweight construction with only 42 grams. By using 3D printing technologies, we uh, can realize really optimized structures and thus have a high material efficiency. Less weight means less energy consumption. For an efficient flight, it is also very important to have a close look at the wing. So we got inspired from the natural plumage of birds with a unique aerodynamics. The artificial feathers are made from a very lightweight, strong and flexible foam and a carbon kill. They adapt optimally in flight. During the wing upstroke, they open, thus saves energy. During downstroke, they close for a very strong wing beat. The Bionic Swift are very agile and small, and they can even fly curves and loopings. You can hardly tell them apart from their natural role model, especially when they are flying in a group. For these complex and difficult flying maneuvers, we have developed a kind of an indoor GPS based on a radio basis. This is the real innovation of the Bionic Swift. Thank you very much for sharing this interesting picture. You're welcome. And Mr. Stotz, uh, you also work with the fascination of bionics at Festo Didactic. So how do bionic products help you in education? I mean, bionics is the perfect topic to really engage and inspire young children already for technology. What we're seeing right now is a bit critical because in the manufacturing space, there is more and more a lack of talent. Younger people are more interested in 
IT, media, and other topics, and we have fewer talent entering the space of manufacturing. So we need to start really, really early to engage students with technology, and the topic of STEM is typically something where people are trying to bring new topics in. And now, bionics is a combination of biology, mechanics, technology in general, but also IT, and that's a perfect starting point. And we here it is, uh, brought the bionic flower uh, into the play, where oh, we nice. mimicked kind of things that we observed with flowers. Topics like sensitivity to light, or how do the leaves open and close? Sensitivity to touch. And those things, I think, and I can actually touch it and then it should open, yes. Uh, that is the next version, how we can basically get folding structure, mechanical structures, motors, but also sensors, the controls for sensors, programming into schools. And we can start with elementary schools, but it goes up in projects for high school students. And it's a great theme actually to expand and start to inspire and engage students into the topic of technology. Yeah, sure. And now we are actually talking about children, but what about adults, Mr. Stotz? Because what we have heard so far, so employees today hardly can't do uh, without any knowledge about data and digitalization. So what do you offer there? I mean, digitization has two facets. The one facet being digitization as a subject matter. Uh, I mean, today you can't really kind of work in technology if you do not understand IT architectures, cloud, big data, all those aspects. But on the other hand, digitization also has a significant impact on learning itself. So what we've all seen in, during Corona times is that the classical ways how we communicate and consume knowledge have changed. So that's the same in learning. In learning, I think digital components, digital media are becoming more and more prevalent. People want to learn on the go. Mobile learning is becoming relevant. People want to have a self-paced learning. And this is why we have basically taken digitization into learning, created a festo learning experience, a learning portal where the learner gets basically the pieces he needs for self-paced individualized learning. The teacher can take that course as is, but he can also modify and adjust to the needs of the students. Going forward, we will more and more see artificial intelligence as part of this, so that AI is starting to basically find out what is actually the perfect next step in the learning path of the learner. So those aspects, I think, are really relevant. This is how digitization is going to shape learning in the future. Hashtag lifelong learning, Mrs. von Hefen. <laughs> as far as uh, I have heard, you and your team also learn a lot during the last year. So I'm looking, for example, at this soft tent uh, we presented also last year. It's equipped with AI, and I heard it developed during the last month. And uh, as well, I heard uh, the soft tent is no longer alone. Is it right? Yeah, that is right. So as you remember, um, we introduced last year the Bionic Soft Hand by um, Dr. Knobben, and we have uh, developed this further this year. So, um, for example, we added some uh, artificial um, bone structures and also added a wrist. So we could achieve a more uh, precise uh, interaction of the fingers and um, also uh, could improve the action radius of the hand. The fingers uh, can also adapt themselves, the, the grasping power, mm -hmm. to the object, like humans. Um, also, the hand wears a glove with uh, tactile matrix sensors on the fingertips and the inside of the hand and the outside of the robot hand. At the wrist, there is a depth camera uh, for visual object recognition. Therefore, a neural network was trained with data augmentation. But the bionic mobile assistant also consists of an electric arm and a mobile robot. The robot balances on the ball and was developed in close cooperation with the ETH in Zurich. This system dynamically stabilizes itself by constantly moving autonomously. The whole energy supply is on board and it moves autonomously. The industrial change requires a new interaction, a new way of interaction of uh, human beings, machines and data. Workers and robots will more and more work together closely. Festo is working intensively on developing safe systems that can relieve people from monotonous and dangerous activities. So what 
pops up in your mind, Mr. Stotz, if you are listening to this? I mean, the topic of human-machine interaction, humans working with robots, with uh, cobots in this case, is becoming actually very realistic right now. I mean, in our own plans, we have situations where we analyzed work processes, figured out that actually it's too much work for one person, it's actually not enough work for two, so we start to think about implementing a cobot. But cobots typically create some concern because, I mean, we know robots is being enveloped in those big cells where they're basically protected, or we're protected. So in, in this case, I think we had that situation and we had to train the worker to actually engage with the robot. And what we did is we created a training environment where you can basically commission and set up the robot, where you can start to engage with the robot, but also observe in what other situation could you use it. That training environment was used within our own plans to basically optimize the process and train people. And now we're taking it in the next step and take it into our learning solutions and take it out into the market. And that's a typical example how Festo SE and Festo Detecting works together, how we take actually real world examples and basically take them into educational solutions.